Hello everyone, Pizza Save Fruity back with another review. It's not a deck review today, it's a book review of sorts. Um, it is the Hawkman Encyclopedia of American Point Cards. Pretty good book if you're a very good, uh, very big collector. Uh, it is by Tom and Judy Dawson. This goes into a long time fellow Canadian deck collectors. They have tons and tons of decks, especially old decks and probably thousands of decks in general. Tom Dawson, unfortunately, sadly passed away um, a couple months ago uh, after a respiratory illness, I believe it was. He, um, it's unfortunate. They also run the other forum, PlainCardForum.com, uh, I guess it is. But I prefer United Cards just because the other guys banned me. The front end of, of the book has... Some cards that might be familiar to you if you watch my reviews. They are the Murphy Varnas playing cards. Which is pretty cool. So the book has tons of information on a lot of older decks. Specifically, uh, they're, they're American and Canadian only. Um, produced by US Game System apparently. I'm not surprised. Surprised that USBC hasn't done anything like this. Um, basically, going back to the early days of playing cards in the United States. And Canada and up until the 1930s or so basically I would have preferred would have liked if it was a little bit more modern <laughs> but it is what it is so there's a chapter on collecting playing cards the organization of the encyclopedia there's one on the early makers one on the Longley brothers and successor companies one on your consolidated card company a chapter on Andrew Daugherty one on the USPC one on the national card company one on the Perfection Point Card Company, one on the Pyramid Point Card Company, one on uh, a few other different makers there, American Banknote and Kalamazoo and Willis Russell. There's one on the Standard Point Card Manufacturing Company, another one on other manufacturers of wide cards, a chapter on narrow cards, a chapter on pictorial backs, one on Canadian Standard Point Cards, one on advertising cards, one on transformation cards, one on insert cards, one on war cards, one on political and patriotic cards. One on entertainment cards, one on tarot and fortune telling cards. One is on the Exposition World's Fair playing cards. One on souvenirs playing cards on uh, states, cities, and national parks. Another one on railroad souvenir decks. Another one on Canadian and other souvenir decks. Uh, souvenir decks, I should say. Another one that's on decks from colleges, universities, and unions. Another one on bridge and whist decks. Another one on no revoke cards. Another one on new suit signs. Another one on oddities and another one on novelty playing cards. So first you got the preface, uh, all sorts of information on it. This is dates back to 1976, uh, between 76 and 81, which is interesting to me because, or if, uh, it's interesting because my parents got married in 1976. I was born in 78, my sister in 81, uh, and so we're all in that. Wayne's. So there's information on how to collect playing cards or what to look for and information on tax rates and tax stamps which I find very helpful. Well, it can be helpful. Uh, I would have preferred if they had like USB-C seals like I see or maybe they do. Stamps. No, maybe not. Uh, information on how to catalog your playing cards. This one. Yeah, information on how to catalog your playing cards. And here we got the USB-C dating code guide so you can look at the letter on your ACES page and know potentially which year it was made in. Like if it was M, it might have been in 1950, 1970, 1990, or even 1909 and 1930. So kind of all over the way, all over the place. This is information on how the insect is organized. Now on to the early makers here. And you'll see images of the faces, some of the faces, the backs. As you go throughout, I'm not going to go through everything here. Um, just lots of information on. Well, I'll probably do something, look at something, look something up. There's a pyramid playing card company. Here in the center, there's some colorized pictures. There's also advertisements to different companies, like this is Russell and Morgan playing cards. Very cool. Apparently, they were for sale here, wherever that is. And here you see some of the early 
indexes. You got single ended cards. And this is uh, a, a few different decks here. And this uh, has a uh, one way court cards, very vintage style. I believe the there was a replicate, uh, one of the vintage replicate decks from Home Run Games might have done this style of face. I don't really recall. I know for sure I had this style of face in a Illuminated Civil War reproduction deck that I have. Then there's one here with early indexes. I like this one. I think it should be reproduced. There are, there's a few different ones here. There's this index, which has a pip, uh, the number of letter in the corner and a pip on either side. That's pretty interesting with one white quartz. Then you got this other one here, which is the triplicate. This is like the triplicates from Home Run Games where there's a miniaturized playing card in the corner. That was the first, one of the earliest forms of indexes. And then you got this one, which is the Sterling, which I wouldn't mind seeing. We produce the index is actually a number or letter with the letter for the suit. QS, JS. We do that all the time when we're doing magic tricks. We write down a JS or 2C or whatever. So why not for the index? It works for me. And this one I really think is cool. Let's see what we produce when we're in games. Um, border index. It's the index right around the entire border. They got a pip in each corner. And then they got the uh, letter or number and the pip right around the border. I wonder what the ten looks like, but it's pretty cool. Here we got Spanish suited American playing cards and variations of standard courts. Transformation cards, like the Murphy's Vanish uh, the Murphy's Varnish deck, I should say, and other decks we've seen where the pips are incorporated into the artwork. Very nice. I like transformation decks. Illuminated cards like the Civil War one I got. Um I think that's this one here. A Cohen at the top here. That's a reproduction one I got. We got cards here that are political theme decks and war cards. We got American pinups. No peeking. And insert cards. This is an advertising tactic they did where they would place these little uh, cards, insert them into a deck as a form of advertising. And there's smoking and whatnot, cigarettes and tobacco and stuff. So, pretty interesting. Then we got Art Nouveau influences, Art Deco cards. Some pretty interesting stuff. Miscellaneous. Can't really look at that. This is a Green Spade, which is a No Revoke deck. A No Revoke deck is a deck in which. There is a different color per suit. In this case, they have green spades, a orangey heart, a yellow diamond, and a black club. That way, there's no confusion about whether it was heart or diamond or spade or club. Because each suit is a different color, which I do like. And you see another one down here, the No Revoke, different color per suit. I do like that. That's the blue spade again. That's a blue spade. This one's a green spade. Oh. Um... I'll try to hurry up. This one's got a very interesting shape. <laughs> Pretty weird shape, actually. And this one's got custom suits, it looks like. And this one's got Valley's information. It's on bidding. <laughs> Bid right playing cards. Pretty interesting. Moving along, some souvenir playing cards. Jokers from a variety of decks. Advertising back designs and American card backs as well. Here we got more advertising. These are narrow or wood size. Here we got some USB-C backs. I wouldn't mind seeing some of these produced. Like this one obviously has been reproduced. Uh, this one obviously. This joker I've seen reproduced. We've seen that reproduced. I wouldn't mind seeing that one and that one. These are, this one's from the War series. We'll get into that I guess. And you know, there's some pretty interesting ones. That one would be interesting. Add some more advertising for squeezers and door tree and the indicator. I think that one's slated for reproduction from home run games, I hope. I'd like to see that one. Victor Moger, that's another reprint from triplicate uh, from home run games, I should say. There is a nice little calendar here. And then we get into Canadian playing cards and more information. Um World's Fair, all sorts of information, all sorts of decks. 
like I said, I wish there was something that was a little bit more modernized. Of course, nowadays, with the uh, decks coming out every week, it'd be hard to keep it up to date. But if they went up until, like, the year 2000 or something, that would be pretty awesome. And, of course, the index. Um, I want to see something. Show you something. There we go. These got some weird indexes. They don't have, for some reason, the Hoyle uh, Liars Poker deck that I have, but these are similar in essence. This one up here, it says it's a double axe and playing cards. There is two cards on one face for poker, so you can use one or the other or both, I guess. This one is more of the same. And then this one is a, a duplex deck. It's got not only it's got dominoes in there, it's also got multiple uh, indexes. It could be a heart, could be a spade, I guess, a king of hearts or spades. And it's also, uh, I guess that actually maybe represents king of spades. It's also a heart, a four of hearts in there. I don't know. Could be. It's very interesting. So, let's say I want to find some information here um, on USB-C deck. See what kind of information there is very quickly. Chapter 781. Um, there's information on USB-C stuff, obviously. I wanted to find out about... Let's see what kind of information they have on... Something familiar. Let's use something familiar here. <laughs> Well, let's take a bicycle. Here we got bicycle 808. There's information, so if you different jokers, wouldn't mind seeing some of these reproduced. Obviously, this one is in the bicycle joker deck. No idea what the hell that is. <laughs> um, it says here that this is thought to be the first ace of spades for this brand, but it's not known to be the second. Urge it came with a high wheel joker with US in the corners, but the two wheel joker. Picture it was issued with this ace. So this one, this uh, joker came with this ace, or maybe both of these. Uh, this one came with this ace of spades, this deck, but this one is like an original one. Um, apparently, it's scarce. So there's a little information on that. So it's not a whole lot of information. There's some information. You might see some familiar backs here. This one was reprinted, and. I wouldn't mind seeing this and that. Pedal back was reprinted recently, available at Target. Some interesting ones I wouldn't mind seeing. Some that have been reprinted. Actually, that wasn't a reprint, was it? I don't remember. Maybe it was. Um, you know, interesting stuff. You got steamboats over here. It, it has some information on the different decks, like when they were first produced. Information on the aces and the jokers. It doesn't have every single back design or anything like that. Here we go. I wouldn't mind seeing these. These are the War Series decks. Two of the ones that we didn't get. One has got a uh, steam ship. And the other one's got an airplane. And we got the other ones with a tank and whatever. But anyways. Go on USBC. Don't give up on your series. Keep going. It's um, you know, it's got some information there. It's very cool. It's a nice way of getting stuff on decks that you will never get. Like I'm never going to get. 99% of these decks, or 98% of these decks, because they're really old and rare and hard to find. But at least I can check them out whenever I want. It's not something that's necessary uh, for a collector to have, but it's a nice to have. It's a little bit harder to find. It was like 50 is bucks for me, Canadian. 50 is Canadian, like 45 US or something. So it's not horribly priced. It's got... Over 300 pages. Some obviously in color, but most in black and white. There's lots of information on lots of old decks, lots of old companies. I'm surprised there isn't anything on Hoyle. I was disappointed by that. Not too much on Hardcore either, I guess. Some, but not much. Anyway, that is that. Comment, rate, subscribe, let me know what you think. Um, you can actually get a PDF version at conjuringarts.org. Uh, as well as a price guide on pricing decks. I'm not going to do a whole lot of good with more modern decks. But anyways. I think there's actually an updated version somewhere. But I don't know 
it's not going to be that much more updated, I don't think. Anyways, this is from uh, 2001, by the way, I believe it was produced. That is that. Comment, rate, subscribe, check out my sponsors, collectiblepointcards.com, playingcards.net, and cardporn.com. Links and discount codes in the description box below. Like I said, let me know what you think. Comment, rate, subscribe. See you next time. Thanks for watching once again.